Power is not purely the ability to create, it is the ability to reproduce that creation without error. In the unseen machinery of the modern world, where trillions of dollars in economic value rest upon the stability of software, there exists a silent crisis that few outside the engineering elite ever discuss. It is the crisis of entropy. A developer writes a line of code on a laptop in San Francisco, and it functions perfectly. That same code, shipped to a server in Virginia or a satellite orbiting the Earth, fails. This discrepancy, the gap between it works on my machine and it works in production, is the single greatest source of wasted labor in the history of computer science. To solve it, a small group of engineers at the world's largest information company had to invent a new philosophy of control enforced by a language designed to be powerless. The technology is called Bazel, and its heart is a configuration language known as Starlark. All right, so what's Bazel specifically? Well, it's a build system, obviously. It, it's a cross-platform build system. One of the things that Google had to do early was to do cross-platform compilation. Our data centers were all 64 bits, our workstations were all 32 bits, uh, and so we had to cross-compile. And so Bazel naturally evolved cross-compilation support. To the uninitiated, it appears to be nothing more than a tedious list of rules and dependencies. To the masters of infrastructure at companies like Google, SpaceX, and Uber, it is the only barrier standing between order and chaos. Bazel is a build system, a tool that translates human-readable source code into machine-executable binaries. But unlike its predecessors, which treated the build process as a loose collection of scripts and suggestions, Bazel treats the build as a mathematical proof. It was created not to make building software easier, but to make it deterministic. If you input the same ingredients, you must get the exact same result, down to the last bit, regardless of time, location, or the machine performing the work. This obsession with control began inside Google in 2006. At the time, the company was facing an existential threat that had nothing to do with search algorithms or ad revenue. Their code repository, the MonoRepo, was growing at a geometric rate. The existing tools, ancient utilities like Make, or fragile scripts written in Python and Shell, were collapsing under the weight. They allowed for side effects, invisible dependencies, where a piece of code might accidentally rely on a file existing on a specific engineer's desktop. When that engineer left, or when the code was moved to a fresh server, the build would break. The solution was an internal tool named Blaze. It was designed to function like a hermetically sealed laboratory. Nothing enters the build environment unless it is explicitly declared on the manifest. No secret libraries, no system clocks, no internet access. The architects of this system, including early figures like Ulf Adams and later the designer of the Starlark language, Laurent Lebrun, realized that to enforce this level of discipline, they could not use a standard programming language. Standard languages are too powerful. They allow for infinite loops, network calls, and random number generation, all agents of chaos. They needed a language that looked like Python but behaved like a pair of handcuffs. They created Starlark. Starlark is a dialect of Python that has been lobotomized for the sake of safety. It has no while loops. It has no recursion. It is impossible to write a program in Starlark that runs forever. It is designed to terminate every single time. It is the lawgiver that ensures the build graph is static, knowable, and unchangeable. In 2015, Google opened the gates and released a version of Blaze to the public under the anagram Bazel. The impact was slow, seismic, and irreversible. Before Bazel, the industry standard was to accept a certain margin of error in the build process. After Bazel, the titans of industry realized that mostly correct was unacceptable. Companies like SpaceX adopted Bazel to manage the software for the Dragon capsule and Starlink satellites. In aerospace, a non-deterministic build is not an annoyance. It is a potential loss of vehicle. By using Bazel, 
SpaceX ensures that the flight software tested on the ground is bit for bit identical to the software running in orbit. There is no room for a compiler version mismatch in the vacuum of space. The financial sector followed suit. Two Sigma, a hedge fund that manages tens of billions of dollars using algorithmic trading, adopted the system to tame their massive repositories in high-frequency trading, a millisecond of latency introduced by a bloated build, or a bug introduced by a dirty environment, translates to millions in losses. Bazel allowed them to cache their builds across a distributed network. Because Bazel knows exactly what files affect what output, it never rebuilds code that hasn't changed. If a developer in London compiles a massive C++ library, the binary is cached. A developer in New York who needs that same library five minutes later does not rebuild it. They simply download the result. The time saved is measured in centuries of engineering hours. However, this total control comes with a heavy price, leading to a controversy that divides the engineering world to this day. The Basel tax is the initial cost of adoption. To use Basel is to declare war on the easy way of doing things. You cannot simply import a library from the internet. You must register it, hash it, and lock it down. You cannot rely on your operating system's installed tools. Critics argue that for 99% of companies, this level of rigor is overkill, a sledgehammer cracking a nut. They argue it kills velocity in early-stage startups, forcing engineers to spend more time fighting the build system than writing features. The learning curve is vertical. It requires a mental shift from imperative thinking, do this, then do that, to declarative thinking, this is the state of the world. Yet, the adoption continues because the alternative is worse. As organizations grow, the cost of coordination outpaces the cost of tooling. Uber, for instance, used Bazel to tame their massive Go Mono repo. Without it, their thousands of microservices would have spiraled into dependency hell, where updating a single library could silently break a ride dispatch service in a different continent. By enforcing strict visibility rules, Bazel allows a platform team to deprecate a piece of code and know, with 100% certainty, exactly who is using it. It turns the code base into a queryable database of dependencies. To understand the technical brilliance of this, one must visualize the directed acyclic graph, or DAG. When you run a command in Bazel, it does not just compile code, it constructs a massive graph of every single file, compiler, and test case involved in the project. It then calculates a hash, a digital fingerprint for every node in that graph. This is the Merkle tree concept applied to build artifacts. If a comment in a source file changes, the hash changes. This change propagates up the tree, invalidating only the things that depend on that specific file. This is why Bazel is fast. It is not fast because it compiles quicker. It is fast because it refuses to do work that has already been done. It is the ultimate exercise in laziness through intelligence. This technology stands in stark contrast to tools like Maven or Gradle, which dominate the Java world, or Make, the grandfather of build automation. While these tools have added caching and parallelization over the years, they were born in an era where the machine was trusted. They allow the build script to reach out and touch the operating system. They are imperative by nature. Bazel is functional. It treats the compiler as a pure function. Input A plus input B must always equal output C. If it does not, the build fails immediately. This ruthlessness is what allows Google to run billions of test cases every day. If their build system were even 1% flaky, the sheer volume of false negatives would bring development to a standstill. There are lesser known examples of this power in action. Pinterest used Bazel to standardize their diverse code base of Python, Java, and C++. Before this, they had fragmented teams using different tools, unable to share code effectively. The unification allowed them to move engineers between teams 
without forcing them to learn a new workflow. The language of the build became the common tongue of the engineering organization. Even the creators of the Android Open Source Project rely heavily on the principles that Bazel codified to manage the operating system that powers 3 billion devices. The deeper technical reality of Starlark is that it separates configuration from execution. When a user writes a build file, they are writing Starlark. This code runs during the loading phase. It generates the graph. Once the graph is generated, Starlark dies. The execution phase takes over, and the Bazel engine written in Java and C++ traverses the graph and executes the commands. This separation is crucial. It means that the complexity of the user's logic cannot slow down the parallel execution of the build. It prevents a slow loop in a configuration file from stalling the compilation of a massive binary. Financially, the value generated by Bazel is difficult to calculate because it is measured in the negative. Bugs that didn't happen, deployments that didn't fail, and developers who didn't quit out of frustration. However, estimates suggest that at Google's scale, the efficiency gains from Blaze, Bazel saved the company hundreds of millions of dollars annually in compute resources and engineering time. When you employ 30,000 engineers, Saving five minutes per build per person per day accumulates into a fortune. In the end, Starlark and Bazel represent a shift in the mindset of the digital age. They acknowledge that software has become too complex for humans to hold in their heads. We can no longer trust our memory, nor can we trust our local machines. We must trust the graph. By surrendering the freedom to do whatever we want in our build scripts, we gain the freedom to scale. The build language you didn't notice is the invisible concrete foundation of the digital skyscrapers we inhabit. It is the discipline that allows the chaos of human creativity to be translated reliably and eternally into the rigid logic of the machine.